Several important organs differentiate from the endoderm of the pharyngeal pouches. Let's make the scheme of the arches, ectodermal clefts, and endodermal pouches once more. The oropharyngeal membrane, the first arch, second, third, fourth, sixth. Now we will focus on the endodermal side, the lining of the pharynx. So there will be the first endodermal pouch, the second pouch, the third, the fourth. So this will be the arches. Number one, two, three, four, six. This outside is the ectoderm. Inside there is the endoderm. Of the pharynx. And uh, there are the pouches. This is the pouch. Let's number the pouches. First pouch. What becomes out of the first pouch? We already know that if the first cleft becomes the auditory meatus, external auditory meatus with a tympanic uh, cavity, this must be the auditory tube. connecting the nasopharynx with the tympanic cavity. So part of the tympanic cavity. The second pouch. In the second pouch there is a thickening of the endodermal epithelium that will give rise to the palatine tonsil. So the space will become the tonsillar fossa. The space between the palatoglossus and the palatopharyngeal arches, palatoglossal and palatopharyngeal uh, arches where there's a space for the tons palatine tonsil and the epithelium of the palatine tonsil itself. The third pouch In the third pouch two organs emerge. Again the epithelial, their epithelial component is the thickening of this endoderm. One of these organs will migrate later on downwards and becoming the inferior parathyroid gland. The other organ will become the thymic uh, epithelium. Its reticular epithelium is of the endodermal origin. The fourth pouch, in the wall of the fourth pouch, again two organs will emerge. It will be the uh, superior parathyroid, it will migrate upwards relatively. So the fourth pouch gives rise to the superior parathyroid gland. They both migrate, therefore there might be some anatomical uh, variations in the final position. The inferior and su superior parathyroid gland will reach. And the other organ here emerging is so-called ultimobranchial body
uh, which uh, is at first it's an organ, a solid organ, but it splits into cells, so-called parafollicular, also known as the C cells of the thyroid gland. So it's a population of cells that will infiltrate the thyroid gland, becoming the por its parafollicular cells. Those are special cells producing calcitonin, a hormone that lowers the calcemia, the level of calcium in pl plasma. So we definitely understand that uh, we need to map the fate of the pharyngeal pouches to explain the embryonic origin of all these organs. Next uh, organ we will discuss will be the development of, of the tongue. And uh, let's explain, let's draw this region again, the pharyngeal region in the frontal section, first, second, third, fourth, arch. And what is in front of the pharyngeal, oropharyngeal membrane will be the ectoderm. What is inside will be the endoderm. We already understand that. So this is the ectoderm drawn in blue and uh, this will be the endoderm and this is the barrier between ectoderm and endoderm, the oropharyngeal membrane. Now, uh, the mesenchyma of the stomodium cavity is bulging here, forming paired prominences called lateral lingual swellings. And one small unpaired prominence. But the epithelium that covers these prominences of proliferating mesenchymal mesoderm is covered by ectoderm, so therefore drawn in blue. So we got two lateral lingual swellings in, in the ectodermal region before in front of the or oropharyngeal membrane. And one unpaired uh, prominence called tuberculum impar, which literally translated means an unpaired tubercle. What about the endodermal region behind the orophy oropharyngeal membrane? There is a duct or invaginating here, it's called the thyroglossal duct right behind the oropharyngeal membrane. And there is an elevated region, again with proliferating mesenchyma that is bulging here, the ventral side of pharynx, and this is called the copula. Here there would be uh, the entrance to the larynx, which is uh, a ventral branch of the f of this pharyngeal region. So this is the pharynx. I will need some abbreviation: LLS for the lateral lingual swellings. TI for the tuberculum impar, TD for the thyroglossal duct, 
C for the copula, because these are the parts that will fuse together the f to form the tongue. Lateral swellings are growing. The copula is here growing. The oropharyngeal membrane disappears. Here will be the thyroglossal duct. So the lateral lingual swellings, the tubercum impar, the copula, and the thyroglossal duct. And the final form of the tongue will be formed from these parts. These will form the body of the tongue. while the endodermal part will form the root of the tongue. So the final form would be approximately this. There will be a rafa here, the tuberculum impar, lateral lingual swellings, and the copula here forms the radix, with the foramen sacum as the remnants of the thyroglossal duct. And here is a foramen sacum a blindly ending residual of the thyroglossal duct. as will be in detail explained uh, in another scheme showing the, uh, the development of the thyroid gland. So no wonder that the uh, tongue has a complicated innervation because it's, it's a conglomerate originating, originating from fusion of multiple embryonic components.